Arab history, there's a person known as Amr ibn Kulthum. They say he was the leader of his, of his tribe, Sayyidul Qawm. In his time, in the time of Amr ibn Kulthum, there was another Amr ibn Hind. That Amr had reached the status of being declared a king amidst the tribes. So one Amr is a tribal chief, one Amr is a king. So Amr ibn Hind, the king, summoned Amr ibn Kulthum and his family to his tent. So he came with some men and women of his tribe, along with his mother, into the tent of the king. Women sat behind a curtain. Men sat in the presence of Amr ibn Hind, the king. So you've all watched Urtugul. You know, in olden days, the king used to hang the sword above him as a symbol of authority and also in case he needs it to implement justice. So there's a sword hanging above the head of the king. Amr ibn Kulthum is sitting in his presence. Across the tent, behind the curtain, the mother of the king asked the mother of Amr ibn Kulthum, can you pass me the pot of water? And she did it with a hint of showing authority over her. The sensitivities of a mother of a chief of a tribe didn't accept it. So she said, whoever owns the pot has more right to it than me, meaning your pot, take it yourself. The king's mother insisted. So the mother of Amr ibn Kulthum cried out, Oh, the dishonor of our tribe. Amr heard across the veil in the chamber of the king. Oh, the dishonor of our tribe. He jumped up, took the sword, cut off the head of the king. I set the scene that you realize that you're dealing with a people Easily offended, quick to draw the blade when sensing offense, and the same people who have certain things they hold in high esteem. Of the things they hold in high esteem is their gods, their idols. Khalid ibn al-Walid says, my father sacrificed a hundred camels for a single god. I vouch for you, forgive the rudeness. There's not one here who has sacrificed a hundred goats for your real God. They sacrificed a hundred camels for a stone God. Showing reverence, obedience, love, admiration, adoration, devotion, backed with this sensitive mentality, quick to anger, quick to be insulted, quick to react. That scene, scene. Now to this people, Allah sent a messenger with the declaration, La ilaha illallah. They had 360 of these idols, gods, in the Kaaba and around the Kaaba. To which, to which they were devoted as that. Now the Rasul comes saying, nothing is worthy of worshipping save the one mighty God, meaning all this is rubbish. Do you know the type of heart you need to have to make that declaration to a people like that? Offending the most sensitive of sensitivities. 
and you require a heart bigger than that of a lion. So my first point to you, dear ones, tonight is the Islam teaches courage by definition. Grow courage, teach courage to the next generation. Because whatever you want in life, worth having is on the other side of fear. If you have the courage to climb over your fear, you will be able to achieve the goals that you should achieve. Some of you have the talent to be the next big thing, yet you're afraid of losing a nine to five job in which you're unhappy, miserable, you go in day in, day out, you curse yourself when you go, you curse yourself when you come. If you had had the courage to follow your dream, you would have become the next big thing. Having said that, dear ones, I said some of you, because what a weird situation that tomorrow the whole of Leeds has given up on their jobs, you know. And I say, how did this happen? Oh, there was a guy here from Australia. Courage, dear ones. Time is dead short, so I will rush. Of the people that had courage, who accepted the call as a person by the name of Bilal ibn Rabaha. I am only teaching two lessons tonight. The first one, courage done. Second one, of the people that had courage who accepted this mission was Bilal radiallahu anhu. Bilal is a Habashi slave in Mecca, meaning he has no tribal support, no one to back him, no one to support him. Yet this Bilal is of the first five people to declare their faith. Ibn Mas'ud says in the hadith is in Imam Ahmad that the Prophet declared it, Abu Bakr declared it, um, Sumayya declared it, Ammar declared it, uh, Bilal declared it and Maqdad declared it. Radiallahu anhum ajma'in. With the heart, it also means he has foresight because he can see what no one else can see. This has just started and yet he sees that it is divine. But my point, my lesson to you is not this. My lesson to you is if you bear difficulty, if you suffer for the truth, if you suffer for the deen, if you bear hardship for the service of the deen of Allah, only one thing happens. Allah Rabbul Izzah elevates you, honors you, exalts you through time and space. So Bilal, the slave declared faith, the natural reaction is they taunted him, insulted him, assaulted him, tortured him. And you know the story. The boulder was on his chest, dragged across the street by the kids. Um, and yet he cries out, Ahadun Ahad, my Lord is one, my Lord is one. Notice, dear ones, Bilal is a slave. Slaves are not servants. Servants have freedom. They don't like this boss, they'll work for that boss. Doesn't like this pay, will work for that pay. Slaves are owned. You belong to the master. Your product belongs to the master. Your kids belong to the master. You work, he takes the benefits, he feeds you a little bit. You're not allowed to sit in the same room as him. You're not allowed to eat on the same sofa as him. You're a slave. So this is Bilal. I want you to think, think dear ones, what's the biggest dream of a slave? Masha Allah bless you, Ya Rab. Can I have a big mashallah, please? I think there's a confusion with the word big in Leeds. So a big mashallah, please. Allah bless you, Ya Rab. Freedom. So now Bilal has accepted Islam, he's being tortured, so he bears the discomfort for the deen. Allah Rabbul Izzah sends Abu Bakr al-Siddiq to do what? Emancipate him, set him free. So Abu Bakr comes, purchases him and releases him, sets him free. Notice the first honor that Allah gave him, 
after bearing difficulty for the deen, Allah Rabbul Izza gives him what he wouldn't have ever had otherwise, freedom for him and his progeny after him. Do you see when I tell you, when you bear difficulty, Allah honors. Next, second point, notice that Allah Rabbul Izza Everything works under the instructions of the Zul Arsh al Majid and Fa'alul Lima Yurid. Allah could have sent a non Muslim to come and free him, grow some sympathy in his heart. Allah Rabbul Izza could have sent another Sahabi, but Allah Rabbul Izza sent Abu Bakr al Siddiq to emancipate him. You know, I travel a fair bit and based on the reception you get at the airport, it kind of dictates your rank amidst people. So Prime Minister comes, Prime Minister comes to receive. Mona comes, Mona comes to receive at the airport. Minister comes, Minister comes to receive. Who has come to receive Bilal? Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Do you see honor? The most righteous of the Ummah after the Prophet. Do you see when I tell you, bear difficulty for Allah Rabbul Izzah. Allah will do nothing but honor and elevate you. Now notice, straight away something else happens. He becomes a Sahabi of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is called the Sharaf of Suhba. The Rasul says, Alayhi Afdala Salatu Wa Tammu Taslim, Tuba Liman Ra'ani, Glad tidings to those that laid eyes upon me. Ah, what honor is that? Glad tidings to those who saw the ones that saw me. I, I have 11 minutes. My, I, I'm, I'm racing. So he becomes a Sahabi. The same Bilal that they wouldn't sit with on the same Sufra now shares the Sufra with the Rasul of Allah. But the honors do not stop there. Today, you go to the Muslim world, go to the same Arab world, they will mention his name and they will say Bilal radiyallahu an. Forget about them, the kings will say Sayyidina, Sayyidina Bilal. Our master Bilal, the Habashi slave that you wouldn't sit with, what elevated you to this status? Do you see when you bear for the deen, Allah honors you? So Bilal became Bilal radiyallahu an. Bilal ibn Rabah became Bilal, our master. Today, Arab monarchs refer to him the same. Because Allah honors. Then migration happened. So the Prophet وسلم, migrates to Medina. So Bilal migrates with the Prophet وسلم, not directly with him as in the Prophet migrated and Bilal migrated. And in Medina, he becomes the confidant of the Prophet He becomes the confidant of the... Guys, you can't play with the timer. Because I adjust accordingly, then you twitch this and then I have to readjust, you know. You guys can't see, there's a timer here. Anyway, so, <clears throat> so then Bilal radiallahu anhu migrates. And in this migration, Allah Rabbul Izzah creates an Islamic government. They forced him to leave, so Allah created a government for him instead. Now in this government, Bilal is the treasurer, the confidant of the Prophet Wasallam. Narration after narration, Bilal give this person this much money, Bilal give this person this much this, Bilal, the confidant of the Rasul and the treasurer of the Prophet Wasallam. Do you see when I say Allah Rabbul Izza honors? Then, the salah became a requirement. The mosque was built, jama'ah. So they had to make a call for prayer. So they were inspired with the adhan. 
So of all of the Muslims, Bilal becomes the first mu'adhin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa See, you, you don't understand the depth and value of that. Today, there are millions of masajid around the planet. Each masjid declares the adhan for every salah. Every adhan is heard by the local population. And every adhan is traced back to the one that said it first. And the one that said it first was Bilal radiallahu anhu. مَنْ سَنَّا سُنَّةً حَسَنَةً فَلَهُ أَجْرُهُ وَأَجْرُ مَنْ عَمِلَ بِهِ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Whoever starts a good practice, he will get the reward of it. And the reward of whoever acts upon it till qiyamah come. So every time and every masjid and every corner of the world that it is declared Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, a copy of the result and a copy of the reward goes into the account of Bilal. Do you see, dear ones, when I tell you that whoever bears difficulty for the deen of Allah, Allah honors you through time and space. And each time we declare the Azan, we revive the practice of this Habashi servant slave who was honored by Allah and honored by the Deen. Then Fath Makkah came. The conquest of Makkah. Islam now reigns supreme. The Jazeera has fallen to the Deen. And the Muslims come into the holy sanctuary. So the Prophet ﷺ orders Bilal, climb on the Kaaba and declare the Azan. Can you see the honor in reality, physically, symbolically, metaphorically? Bilal, the Habashi slave who would barely be allowed to circumambulate in the normal times, in the days of Jahiliyyah, now climbs up on top of the Kaaba to declare the Azan and the oneness of Allah Rabbul Izza. Honor beyond honors. And then subhanallah, as though or as if it wasn't enough, as if it wasn't enough. The Prophet wasallam says, Ya Bilal, I heard your footsteps in Jannah. You see, you all work. Hopefully you'll continue to work tomorrow. And in your work environment, if you get a slight pat on the back, a slight email of appreciation, a slight well done, a little nod, good job, you walk around and your colleagues can see something has changed. Like, look at Ahmed, he's on cloud nine. You know, because a fellow worker a colleague, a boss, acknowledged, rewarded by praise. Imagine Bilal receiving this news. Oh, Bilal, I heard your footsteps, the sound of your shoes in Jannah. And then time passes, and the Rasul of Allah passed away. And Bilal radiallahu anhu leaves Medina because it's hard for him to bear. Everywhere he looks, the memory of the beloved. Time passes. Bilal ages. Bilal is on his deathbed. His wife is next to him. And she cries 
as a, as a wife would. So she says, Wa hazana, oh, what calamity, what sadness. I will be a widow. My husband will pass. Worse than that, a sahabi of the Rasul will go from this planet. And in this toil, as she is saddened, Bilal radiallahu anhu is full of joy. And he says, غَدًا نَلْقَ الْأَحِبَّةِ مُحَمَّدًا وَصَحْبَةِ Just tomorrow, tomorrow I will meet the beloved Muhammad and his companions. <coughs> At the time of death, is a prophecy of what will happen next. A good ending is a good sign of good things coming. And if Allah Rabbul Izzah places Sakina on your heart, <coughs> if Allah Rabbul Izzah gives you confidence at the time of death, reassurance, it is a blessing He has sent as a foretelling of what is to come. And an enviable death is this, that he, at the precipice of death, he goes, finally the wait is over. Just tomorrow I will be with the Rasul and the companions. Glad tidings to you, Ya Bilal. Bakhin, bakhin, Ya Bilal. That Allah honored you and as a symbol left you for the thousands seated here and the other thousands who will listen online. That whoever bears difficulty for the Zul Arsh al Majid and Fa'al al Lima Yurid, Allah Rabbul Izza will honor you through time and space. So, dear ones, listen to me good. You will leave here tonight. You'll go back to work and back to school and back to universities. And they bear the difficulties and bear it as a badge of honor. So, you're at uni and maybe there's not adequate places to pray and maybe there's peer pressure not to pray and maybe it would look awkward. Bear it, dear one. Say, nah, I'm praying. And Allah will honor you at the very least with this. You will have children someday. Allah bless them for you. You will say, sweetheart, your father was one that used to pray in the oval when everyone else was watching, walking by, and I was unfazed. Do you know the type of confidence and legacy and pride and heritage that will create in the next generation? And for you, my sister, who you know, you don the scarf and the hijab and maybe people will look and maybe you will feel uncomfortable and maybe um, you will get the stares and the daggers and maybe there'll be a comment here and there. Bear it, my sister, bear it. Bear it as a badge of honor so a time will come that the next generation can say and your little one can say in the whole of this institution and in this work and in this school and in this university, mine was a mom that was fully covered. Honor. And then imagine the standards you have set for that young child and the projectile you have set for that child and the direction you have set for that child. Allah honor you and your children, Ya Rabb. So difficulties will come. When it comes, I don't want you to flinch from it. And at the same time, I don't want you to look for it. Because silly, you know, I'm walking around looking for difficulties. Habibi, I haven't told you that. But when it comes, bear it. Conscious that Allah Rabbul Izza watches and Allah Rabbul Izza rewards. Allah honor you. Allah elevate you. Allah guide you. Allah guard you for your time and patience. I thank you. May the one above the heavens guide and guard you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.